Hey everybody, welcome back for another transit how-to video. Today our patient is another 2017 Ford Transit that is having a symptom of lacking power. Um, it only really happens once the vehicle gets up to temperature and it only really happens under heavy throttle. But it sounds, sorry, excuse me for the, uh, the glisten. It is uh, hotter than two rats fucking in a wool sock in here. Um, anyways, it's got a uh, symptom of lacking power, uh, only under half throttle or above really. Other than that, it idles and runs just fine. I've done a misfire test on it. It is not really misfiring on any uh, one cylinder. It's misfiring on the whole right bank. Uh, and like I said, it only really starts misfiring when you try to make the engine breathe more. This truck was driven through wet concrete by someone with a two-year degree and when they drove it through the wet concrete they thought I need to go spray it all off so they got a nice cold garden hose went underneath spraying all that concrete off and hit the right side catalytic converter catalytic converters don't like uh, temperature shock uh, they like hot exhaust palladium nickel cadmium long walks on the beach uh, but they don't like going from really hot to really cold in a big hurry. Do not forward water in your transit with catalytic converters. If you are going to be doing a whole lot of driving and get away with it, I would suggest an off-road pipe or a shielded catalytic converter. These catalytic converters are not shielded in a sense that from squinching. Uh, they do make special catalytic converters that they're kind of like a tumbler, you know, like a thermos. You have a uh, outside covering over the inside covering of the catalytic converter that protects it from severe thermal shock. What happens is that catalyst expands inside the catalytic converter and when you quench it with uh, cold water, the case of the catalytic converter constricts down on that hot catalyst and it fractures it. And it goes all over the place and it plugs up the cat. Uh, when I do a misfire or a power balance test on this, when I give it gas, I see one, two, and three all missing. The other cylinders are doing just fine, but one, two, and three is all on the right side uh, they're all completely missing so I'm not for sure 100% of what I'm gonna find but I bet you when I cut open that catalytic converter I'm going to see a fractured catalyst and a plugged catalytic converter I'm also getting a rattle on the uh, right side exhaust pipe when you goose the throttle uh, as the engine RPM comes back down I hear a clank clank I can't get it to reproduce now or else I do it on a, uh, a video for you but when it first came in that was the issue so Let's get the old girl up in the air and let's get the catalytic converters off. Okay, so this is our catalytic converter assembly. She starts here, goes all the way through up front, splits into two right back there, of course. You have one up here on the right side, one hanging down here low on the left side. It does kind of have me puzzled that this isn't the one that's plugged up, but I don't know. I'm definitely having exhaust flow issues on the right side, and I'm getting noise out of that right side catalytic converter. As you can see, we still have some, some concrete splatter all about. But we're going to start with these back two bolts. They're 13 millimeters. And then we'll get these guys off up here. But before we do any of that, we need to unhook our oxygen sensors. Like I said, this is all a one-piece design. As you can see, they have this piece here, which links these two pipes together before they split off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one cut here and one cut here. That way we can take off this tail section completely on its own, and that allows us more room to fish this big guy out of here. If you wanna make it a little bit easier on you too, what you can do, especially if you're working with you know jack stands like I am you can do another cut right here which makes it super easy it'll save you a little bit of jostling stuff around to get it out of there but you can get by with just those two cuts there on the older units they weren't joined together right there and you were able to do one cut but I just realized this unit has that little piece that joins that pipe together so that's what we're gonna get started doing first we're gonna unhook all those O2 sensors Okay, so we have our cat cut up here. Like I said, we cut it in about three places after we unhooked all our sensors. We unbolted everything, which made it uh, real easy to get this out of here. And to show you what I found inside this cat, which was creating my low power 
uh, missing on the right side bank. I've cut this cat open. I'm going to take it right over here. I cut this open to show you. That the front catalyst, as you can see, is intact. But the rear catalyst did something rather interesting. It's been rolling around inside that catalytic converter and slowly turning into a bowl rather uniformly. And I got to say, this is kind of amusing. As you can see, the catalyst actually itself is not clogged. But what would happen was it would roll around into a configuration like that and it'd plug the exhaust. The exhaust couldn't breathe. You'd let off the gas, you'd brake, it'd roll forward, get into a configuration where it could breathe through it again, and then intermittently it was acting like a plugged catalytic converter. Which I gotta say, that's the first time I've ever seen that one. But that's an indicator of what was going on with this catalytic converter. Let's show you what the new MagnaFlow unit looks like. Here we are underneath with the new MagnaFlow unit installed. All our O2 sensors are plugged back up. You notice that the cats on these are much smaller. And what's cool about these catalytic converters is they're a shield around a shield. There's actually another case inside of that one which holds the catalytic converter which provides a little bit of a thermal barrier for that. It's almost kind of like a tumbler uh, thermos. The in inside layer is evacuated and uh, it helps to make a really really good insulator much better than stock and it comes in three pieces I've just got it mocked in yet, I still got to put in that other bolt but it's got two clamps there that connect to the Y unit which connect like normal and I gotta say I think that Y unit probably flows better I'm no fluid hydrodynamicist but I imagine by the way it looks compared to the factory one I bet it flows a little bit better than factory but it's a breeze to get in here you do not have to drop this cradle you can get it in no problem honestly the hardest part about doing this is getting the O2 sensors unplugged and plugged back in but that's our new unit it's all installed well I hope that was uh, informative for you I really feel bad that I wasn't able to get shots of me actually taking everything out and putting it back in but I am now a one-man band in this shop I literally don't have any help out here so having someone hold the camera for me get a good angle on it and um, and do it all would, would have been really difficult I'll, I'll definitely endeavor to do better on future, future videos but I'm sorry I couldn't get an actual removal process and putting it in and out but I gotta say the hardest part about this job is those O2 sensors um, the left side uh, sensor one uh, bank two sensor one it connects up on the left rear valve cover uh, left rear of the valve cover uh, you actually have to get to it from the top uh, and then there's one little keeper that goes into the back of the cylinder head that keeps the wire they usually break um, and then the O2, the bank one or bank two sensor two, it connects on the left side of the transmission. Uh, and then bank one sensor one, it's right there, right next to it. It's attached to another piece of wire and harness. It's really easy to get to. And then bank one sensor two, it connects on the left side of the transmission. Again, really easy to get to. That driver side is the one that's a real pain in the butt to, uh, to get in and out of there. But once you get those sensors out, man, that, that, that thing comes out and goes back in on a breeze if you buy the forward part you have to drop the whole cradle to get it in and out so you're talking about undoing the lower ball joint tie rod ends um, the power steering lines for the rack and pinion all of those things uh, it's a major pain in the butt um, I really like the MagnaFlow unit I will say these uh, this is the third one I've done on these transits and they seem to pep up when you get that MagnaFlow converter on there I think they do flow better than stock uh, they sound a little bit different under acceleration, but I mean, it's not gaudy or loud or anything. They just have a little bit different exhaust tone. But I think they're a good unit. They're 750 bucks. Uh, the Ford unit's like $1,200, uh, and it's way harder to do the Ford unit than it is the MagnaFlow unit. So I really appreciate you, MagnaFlow, for uh, making that uh, kit for the uh, the Ford Transit with a 3.7. I don't think they make one for the 3.5 yet. Um, I haven't had any issues with the 3.5's catalytic converters. It's only the 3.7's. Uh, I think it's just because they hang lower uh, and they're much more susceptible to getting splashed with cold water from the, from the tires. So, alright guys, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for future videos.